Okay, so for my next project, I'm going to make another P30, okay? Here's my polecat, all right? That was uh, really nice. It's really fun, flies great. So I'm motivated to make another one. Now, of course, I considered this design. Uh, I, this time I'm going to design my own, all right? The wing's going to be a little bit wider. And, uh, you know, I looked at this uh, plan. I have a bunch of other plans, the uh, tubular buster, I have the bird dog. Another thing that was useful is I have these issues of uh, free flight quarterly. All right, so you find lots of P30 designs in here. That was useful. And of course, I also use my flying experience as well. Okay, so this time I'm scratch building it. All right, I'm, I'm actually trying to build as slow as possible because I have quite a fleet here already. So I'm trying to enjoy the build. Now, one thing I do is I like to make little 16th inch, uh, I'm sorry, a 16th inch plywood uh, rip forms. All right, here's one for the stab. You can see I don't put the notches in. And uh, here's one for the wing. I'm not going to use a uh, carbon fiber spar, so it's got the hole there for that. And uh, I actually glue on the rib form, and then what I like to do is soak it with a little bit of CA because that hardens it all up so uh, it doesn't get damaged when you're cutting the ribs. All right, now another thing I've done is I wanted to make some comparisons here. So here's kind of like my standard uh, P30 tube, okay? It's uh, basically a 32nd inch thick balsa I got at the art store. I put three coats of 50% uh, thin nitrate on the inside. Uh, then I glue it end to end. And uh, then I dope on wet Asaki tissue. After that's dry, I put a second coat uh, of dope on it. All right. Then finally, I put in a 64th inch ply reinforcer at the nose, about a half inch long, and at the rear, about a, an inch long. Okay. Uh, and it's 21 inches long. Now the total weight of this was 7.4 grams, which is pretty good. Now I wanted to compare that because on this one actually what I'm going to use is a carbon fiber, a three quarter inch carbon fiber uh, motor tube that I got from uh, Mike Woodhouse, okay? So all you got to do here is put in the plywood reinforcers at the front and rear, all right? And this weighed 7.3 grams, so it's very good. The part I like about this is that uh, now I can build a whole P30 without having to do any doping. And, uh, you know, I don't really have a good space to do doping. That's why I like doing it that way. All right. Uh, I'm not sure you can see it, but I wrap the front with a little bit of thread, as I've pointed out in my other videos. And then I put a little bit of thin CA on it. And the reason I do that is if you don't do that and you hit a tree or something like that, it tends to split the tube. But that's never happened with the uh, thread. It greatly strengthens it. Okay. Uh, you can see I got a gizmo geezer in there. All right, I also built in a little bit of down thrust in the nose button this time. Okay, now here's the stab. All right, now uh, you can see it uses the laminated tips, both the stab and the rudder, whoops, which I like uh, quite a bit. All right, uh, for two reasons. One is when you hit something, it seems like it's just a lot stronger than the square tips. Uh, the other thing is that uh, it's very stiff, okay? You don't need any high tech or anything here. All I did is I put in two or 16 square stringers. I was thinking I'd put some web sheeting in the space there, but I think it's stiff enough, so I don't even need to. So I'm just gonna cover it and see how that goes. I also used the stab form for the rudder, all right? And uh, you know, uh, you can also, if you want an airfoil, you can put a second little uh, ribbon there. Now for my coupe, I just use a bigger version of the same rudder. And there I put in a little 30 second, you know, rib like this, okay, just to give it a little bit of an airfoil shape. But it doesn't seem like you need it for the P30, all right? It's been flying great without it, and I have great control. I think the fact that the whole rudder turns just gives you really, really nice control. Okay, now the other thing you'll see here is I've got my, it's a single pivoting rudder there. I've got my nylon screw there, and I've also got it for the stab. Nice part about that is you can very precisely adjust the angle, or if you want, you can make it uh, VIT. Okay. The other thing I like about the nylon screws is that if you really do have a bad, uh, you know, you crash, you hit something, they snap very easily. And that might sound kind of strange, but the nice part about that is that the stab or the rudder will just snap right off and so they don't get damaged. Okay. Also, it's very easy to fix. What I do is I take a very small drill and I drill out the stub. Then I go to a slightly larger drill and usually you can just remove the whole thing and have the original hole and then just put another new screw right in. I, I mean, I've repaired some holes, uh, you know, four or five times and uh, it's great. So it's very, very simple to repair, okay? Now for the wing, again, I'm gonna use a carbon fiber spar. So what I did here is I 
took a piece of one eighth inch brass tubing and I sharpened the ends and then you can kind of twist this in to make the hole for the ribs. Let me show you those. I got them sitting over here. All right, on the carbon fiber. This is a 3.2 millimeter carbon fiber spar I'm gonna use. And then there's all the ribs, okay? And what I did is after I cut them all out, I put them on here and then I just very lightly sanded the ends to just kind of even it all up, all right? So this is ready to go for the wing. I also already made the uh, laminated tips. Here's that. Those are ready to go. So we'll see how this goes. And I also already made the pylon. Now in the pylon this time I had to make it a little bit taller. It's about an inch and a half because I'm going to stand the uh, servo up because I want to try making a Kevlar pull-pull system instead of using a push rod. So we'll see how that works. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is get working on the wing here. We'll get that done and uh, we'll see how that goes. Alright, it's about a month later, but the wing actually built pretty fast. Basically what I did is I got the ribs spread out and aligned on the carbon fiber tube and then I just used white glue to glue on the leading and trailing edge, alright? You gotta remember to shim the trailing edge a little bit so it stays with the airfoil. I shimmed it about a 30 second. Uh, the other thing I'd say is, uh, you know, I used uh, tight bond here. I noticed they have a newer version that's a little bit more yellow and I tried it, but it's way too brittle. So I'd really recommend get the tight bond original. I, I think that's still the best, alright? Another thing I like is, you know, to shape the leading edges, I use this, which is a master air screw. This is great, and you could use it on a trailing edge, too. It very quickly and finally just adjust the blade really as close as you can. And you can really shape the leading edge nice and quick that way. And uh, then you only need to do a little bit of fine sanding, and you're ready to go. So after I got the leading and the trailing edge glued in place, I put a little shot of thin CA right at the where the carbon fiber tube is. It looks like that bonds the uh, bolsa to the carbon fiber really, really well. Okay. I also put a little bit of eighth inch uh, in the middle here for the wing mount. All right. Should really use the lightest you have. I just use what I had on hand. And then I put a millimeter uh, cap strips on the top and bottom of the ribs. I used three millimeters at the dihedral and I used two millimeters in the center section. And for that again, I used uh, the Loctite. All right. This is really great. I think it Doing it with the cap strips is just much stronger and it's easier than doing it with gussets, okay? Uh, the bottom is pretty simple. You just put it on and push it right down, it'll stick in. The top, what I did is first I put a little bit of glue along here, got it lined up, you know, made sure I used uh, clean toothpicks to hold it in place, let it dry, then I put it on the rest. So it was kind of like sticking up like this. Then I put it on the rest of the rib and then I just pushed it down in place. And I thought that worked really, really well, okay? So I'm looking forward to covering this. Now here's the equipment, all right. So this is the newer version of the R415. Uh, okay, so we're gonna see how this goes. And you can see I also ended up going back to the switch. And the reason why is these, the one bad thing about these E-Flight plugs is they're delicate, they get broken real easy. So with the switch, you can just leave the battery in and flick it on and off, all right. Here's the servo, I'm gonna try the pull-pull here, okay. Now since I'm standing the servo up, I had to make a bigger, uh, you know, hole for for it in the uh, pylon here. And the glue in the servo, I, I like to use five minute epoxy, okay, like this. And the reason I like to use it is it's kind of rubbery, so it's impact resistant. Also, if you have to replace the servo, it's really easy to cut it out. And you can really, you know, peel off the old glue, all right, and just put a new one right in. So that's why I always use the five minute epoxy for it to mount my servos. Now, since the hole is so big here, I also made a little cap, okay. And so what I'm going to do is after I glue in the servo, then I'm going to glue on, tack glue on the cover. And that way if I have to replace the servo, I can just take the cover off and, uh, you know, cut out the servo and put a new one in. Okay, so we're ready to get everything, uh, you know, covered here. I'll start doing the covering. I think I'm going to just use a quarter mil mylar for everything and we'll see how that goes. All right, it's been a few weeks, but I finally finished the P30. Uh, following a friend's suggestion, I'm going to call it the Hell's Kitchen P30 because that's where it was built and that's where it's going to be flown. Okay, so for the wing, I was going to use a quarter mil mylar, but I chickened out a little bit and I used 3 8 mil. Let's just see how that holds up. For the stab and the rudder, I used a quarter mil, okay? Then I used Design Master Floral Paint, all right? This was called Raspberry, even though it looks kind of close to the fuchsia. Uh, a couple other things I did is now I mounted the pylon, as you can see. And I've used these carbon fiber tubes before, and the epoxy binds okay, but it's not that great. So what I did is, right around the middle of the pylon, I wrapped about an inch of thread, 
all right, which I held on with the little CA. And uh, you know, that way the epoxy binds really nice to that, so it keeps it in place very nice. All right, so there's the stab and rudder. I thought those came out uh, pretty nice. As you can see, I have my single pivoting rudder, as I did before. I'm really happy with the weight on this. Now the total weight, not including the pylon, was 38.5 grams, which is pretty light. So if this was free flight, you know, I would make a small pylon, maybe two grams, and you'd be right at the 40 gram minimum. So you can easily build this to weight, okay? Now for the RC version, of course, I need a bigger pylon. It's gotta be taller and wider. Uh, in this case, the pylon came out to 4.4 grams, so the total weight was 42.9 grams, which is really, really good. I'm really happy. That's 20 grams lighter than my last one. And that one flies pretty nice, so I'm sure this is gonna fly fairly well. Uh, the equipment in this case was uh, 6.3 uh, 6 grams. So with the glue and everything else, the total flying weight as you see it here is just about 50 grams, okay? Then the battery's gonna add maybe another 1.6 grams, basically. So it's really good. I, this is why I think the 50 gram minimum is really nice. Now on this one, I did a Kevlar pull-pull system. You can see it there, okay? So I use Kevlar and uh, I have it on, so let me show you. So here it is, and I, this is what's new for me, but I think this works pretty well. All right, so there you go. There's the rudder. You can see it's got nice throw. I don't think I'm gonna have any problems. So the Kevlar thread weighs next to nothing, so doing it this way, it's extremely light. All right, so we're gonna have to get out and uh, get flying. I'm a little behind. I, I have, really have a lot of planes to fly here now, so it's probably gonna take me a little while. But uh, this looks like a lot of fun, and we'll see how it flies. I'll try to get some video.